Hello. Yep, um, we're alive. Sometimes <laughs> we get caught in a champagne supernova and forget what time it is. <laughs> <laughs> we have deep, Hi, deep discussions about yes. mice. <laughs> yes. What's <laughs> up, everyone? Hi, so Rohit. Get... Oh, I didn't do my camera thing right. Eric Boo. Theron. All right, let me go do that. <laughs> Oh, okay. hi, Steve you Hudson. Got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. We, and... uh, like, like Ben was saying, we were, um, as you probably saw in uh, chat realm, we we're talking about them mice. <laughs> <laughs> what mouse do you have, Jill? Uh, made in China, generic. <laughs> but. I <laughs> <laughs> okay, that doesn't but, look, you know, generic. That 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 has some detail to it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's actually very comfortable. That's 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 why I like this mouse. It fit my hands, and it's pretty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because I've had so many Logitech mice over the years, but I'm just wanted to want, been wanting change. <laughs> mm. <So. laughs> Mm -hmm. MX518, which one is that katana? Let's see, MX518 Logitech. <laughs> oh, it's one of them. Yeah, it, it was the G500S and the MX518. <laughs> yep, 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 mm -hmm. yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, this mouse, I got it. You know, when it was new, it was like 30 bucks. And now there's a bunch of knockoffs of it. <laughs> They're like yeah. five bucks. <laughs> it became very popular, but it's because it's comfortable. <laughs> yeah, I will need to uh, find a way to get that Corsair, that Mike G. So um, <laughs> thoughtfully <Nice>. bought for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mike G. <laughs> right, because Mike see. G is the reigning champion of uh, Frank's uh, a fine upstanding cannibal wall <laughs> yes <laughs> so we got a bit of a show for you this afternoon, this evening, this mm -hmm. morning depending on where you may happen to be Hawaii <laughs> three what is it about? Mm. American Samoa <laughs> like 1045 I don't know What's Hawaii? Like, it's California minus what? Minus... It's either minus one or minus two. It's one or two, probably. Yeah. yeah minus think... three. Oh, minus three, okay. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's farther away than it, it seems. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, not just a hop, skip, and a jump to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad a flight. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't want to swim there, let's be honest. <laughs> oh, my, my dad took a boat there before. Mm -hmm. uh, for this, uh, let's see, Portugal has the Azorian Islands, which are, I guess are like the furthest ones away. And the island that's the furthest away, that's like, even western or wester than all the others uh, is um, Pico or Corv I don't remember one of the two mm. and uh, it's actually on the American uh, plate oh, so it okay. keeps drifting away from the other islands very slowly <laughs> <laughs> bring back Pangea baby yeah <laughs> Was definitely a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be a thing again, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just that they'll Pla all meet on the <laughs> other side. <laughs> yeah. Plate tectonics is a thing. <laughs> Seafloor spreading. Like the Pacific is going to become a lake at some point. <laughs> well, I don't know, man. Talking about plate tectonics, they released the thing. <laughs> they were going to have Del Toro was originally going to do the sequel to um, Robot Bash, the movie, Pacific Rim. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was too busy doing fish banger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, katana skill. Steal the Gaia. <laughs> Anthropomorphize the fucking planet. Yeah, let's not. Well, they've anthropomorphized everything else, <laughs> even web browsers. So. I know, right? <laughs> Don't ever change Japan. Don't ever change. Oh, yes, Linux Gnuru. Yay. <laughs> yeah, Linux Gnuru, it, it's what? Three? Where you yeah. are right now. <laughs> Isn't that exciting? <laughs> Alan, I just double checked. Just you, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I checked as we went live. It showed up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I will be right back. Take care of things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ah, uh, come on, Rohit. You know you can have a little nap and just wake up in time for, um, rocket cars on... <laughs> on Saturday. It's not allowed, man. <laughs> well, uh, Twitch will give you slightly better image quality. Especially if there's games being streamed. The thing with the Twitch is he's got to make sure that you can un do 1080p60. Yeah. Yeah. On desktop, that's not going to be a problem. You might run into issues on mobile device. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I haven't been to Vegas in a minute. How was it? Surprisingly don't mind Vegas. I've never been outside during the day, though. My entire life. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can't imagine. It's brutal at like 10 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I saw the videos of uh, people like putting like cookies inside their car, leaving them parked, and then coming back at the end of the day and the cookies are cooked. <laughs> you can do that. Just, man, you could probably do that in Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> Cars get warm, man. Grand Canyon. Never never had the desire. Nothing against it. It's like that's a big hole. Yeah, I thought we were like, 100 Fahrenheit at night, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but Pedro, it's dry heat, right? Uh, see, I put up with more than 100 Fahrenheit during the day. <laughs> That's uh, growing up in South Portugal. It's, it's dry heat as well. And it goes up to 40 Celsius easily. <laughs> it's 35 degrees outside right now. <laughs> I yeah, thought, no, it's been cool-ish outside here, but this is where office... I thought I was going, man. I thought it was cool. <laughs> like Saturday, Saturday was the first show of the season. Yeah, <laughs> that I genuinely didn't start cooking until the eight mil section. <laughs> yeah, at the office, usually when I get there at like eight. I look at the thermometer uh, that's on my desk. It's like, okay, that's like 22, 23. That's nice. That's cool. Mm -hmm. And then people start getting there. And by 10 a.m., it's usually 30. Okay, I'm opening the window. I don't care. <laughs> and then 30? one of the, uh, yeah, <laughs> one of the, like, people who sit across the, uh, like, the central hallway. It's like, can you close your window? It, it creates a bit of a draft where we sit. No. See that thermometer? Read that temperature. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, it's not my problem you work with lizard people. Also, lizard people are real. Spread. Spread the news. They totally are. The Kardashians, dude. Just like, bring them a rock. 
Give him the hate rock, man. They'll probably use it. Get one for each foot. Yeah, the only thing I play in Vegas is... I'll play blackjack until they start looking at me a little... Not that I break the bank or anything like that, but I try to count cards. <laughs> Which I think is amusing to them to a point. <laughs> oh, he's trying. Yeah, right? And they're like, ah, <laughs> if he starts succeeding, we're going to have to kick him out, but he's trying. That's it. Th then just like the cycle of the deck rolls over where it looks like I might be accomplished, but I'm not. <laughs> oh man mm, let's see have you done anything exciting <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, I bought some socks <laughs> hot <laughs> no those weren't hot socks they were bamboo socks because it's like okay I'm gonna buy boots but I don't have you know Boot socks, because all my socks are those teeny tiny ones that only go like halfway into your ankle. <laughs> Have you? Yes, I know. I would mock you openly yeah. in public. <laughs> Actually, I wouldn't even be near you in public wearing those, um, <laughs> unless you had pants to cover it up to hide the yes, shame. Yes, I wear jeans <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Did you get any? Have you collected any XP on your solo adventure? Uh, no, I'm still waiting for the damn things to show up in stock. Mm. <laughs> it's like, oh, you can buy the 10.5s. That's like five sizes above mine. Nines, please. Thank you. No. <laughs> John, anybody we're willing to hire you, you should go yes. <laughs> With a like, nine-year chasm in your resume, dude. And like, yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> Get your foot in the door. Yeah. We all right. friend. My you, turn to go, 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 <laughs> run. You're wasting time. <laughs> Hi, if you're new, we do this because everyone forgets that this is the thing you probably want to do before we go live. Oh, Linux Gunner, you'll you'll find a good job. I know you will. And if you you move to Canada, you you'll be closer. <laughs> and if you don't, you can blame Jill. <laughs> oh, maybe I could help him get a job. <laughs> Like I said. Mm -hmm. Can refer you for some reason? Wonderful. Don't worry, man. Well, take advantage of those, like, because you're yeah. probably only going to get, like, two. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good bot. Yeah, I see it. It's got a link to YouTube as well. Neat. So just in case you're in our Discord or IRC and you don't know when we go live. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Mm. <laughs> Google STD. <laughs> that is funny, Arthur. And yeah, everyone's been calling it that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jordan doesn't drink beer. <laughs> I wonder if those two doors could touch each other. We're going to find out. Oh, yeah, huh? <laughs> I used to have a townhouse where I genuinely think they mm -hmm. ordered too many doors so they just oh, I just had yeah. doors laying around the house they were in the wall mind mm -hmm. you they functioned but it was like three doors to get to one little spot and I had two different places in the house where yeah. I could touch doors yeah that was always that's always annoying <laughs> this little room had two doors and I'm like it not a very big enough room for two doors, so we just walled in one of them. <laughs> Can those two doors touch? Um, 
they open... It, there's I, I'm light. aware of that. That's not what I asked. Five centimeters, ten centimeters between the two? Mm -hmm. And uh, the one behind this one... That's what I'm asking. <laughs> yeah. Can those that two make love? That way. <laughs> they can't reproduce on their own? No. You have to, okay. <laughs> Ah. No, that that one opens that way, and this one opens this way. Okay, so you're gonna have to get a screwdriver. Um, <laughs> and just flip it around, put it on the other side. <laughs> oh, Arthur, Theron, I actually um, washed this mug, and I'm reusing it for LWW since I hadn't used it on LWW. Um, Linux Nero. Unfortunately, <laughs> the most powerful <laughs> laptop I have is the, um, the ThinkPad X240. It's got a, an i5 4200U. <laughs> As well. <laughs> <clears throat> it's, uh, yeah, no, the processor is even weaker than um, the one I gave to Zoe, because... Like, the X230, mm -hmm. the processor on that is kick-ass. It's a very good processor, but it's only Ivy Bridge. The Haswells, uh, they're a lot better with, like, um... Efficiency, power efficiency. They, the ba battery lasts a heck of a lot longer on the Haswells than it did on the Ivy Bridges. But yeah, the performance is also slightly lower. Mm hmm yeah, basically, pro tip, if you're on a real tight budget and you want to build yourself a gaming PC, find a Ivy Bridge desktop i5. Mm -hmm. Even better, uh, the Dell Optiplex 7010s. Those come with Ivy Bridge i5s. Find an i5 model of one of those. It's a quad core, so and it's not hyper threaded, so you don't mm -hmm. need to worry about Spectre all that much. And then just put like a um, cheapo graphics card on it, like a 1050 Ti or something like that. What are we on about? So <laughs> Linux Gnaru needing another system. <laughs> <laughs> it was asking if I had any spare gaming laptops. <laughs> oh boy, you don't have an excuse to have a laptop anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was looking at that uh, today, Linux Nero, uh, because we have a bunch of Optiplexes in the basement, and I was wondering, it's like, hmm, I wonder how cheap off of one of those I can make a gaming PC. <laughs> because they have um, micro ATX motherboards in them, so pull them out of that case, put it in a cheapo, uh, but like full-size tower for micro ATX. Nope. And all of a sudden, you have yourself a very nice system. <laughs> See, I, I would call foul if I watched that YouTube video, but you got you got to do it inside the Optiplex case. That's a challenge. That's easy enough to do. You just get a low profile uh, 1050 Ti or uh, RX 560 or uh, one of the new 1650s. Like a profiles. monster gaming rig. I want, I want a thread ripper. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or dual epic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See, that's a ten thousand uh, dollar gaming build right there. <laughs> nah, dude, just play X build, dude. <laughs> oh, you could uh, finally play that chess game that totally wasn't mining bitcoins. <laughs> I I, I want to watch Star Wars and ASCII, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we can get on the road. Yes. But yeah, if you're going to buy one brand new Linux Zero, just go with the Ryzen, get the 3600. It is an awesome processor. Just make sure you get, like, a reasonable B450 motherboard that can do some overclocking, because you can easily overclock the 3600 to, like, 3600X levels. It's just a matter of finding a good motherboard to do it. Which one's the 3950? That's a CPU? Yeah, that's the uh, up and coming 16 core 32 thread. Yes. <laughs> Why? Because yeah. that makes Gen 2 thread rippers. Get you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like, it's. Uh, what was it? The supposed price is going to be like $700? <laughs> completely fair. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I honestly, I use Camel Camel Camel. Go check it out. It's a plugin. You can put it on like your Amazon shopping. This is where I find a lot of the like, how did you get it for that price? That. Yeah. And I, I do make it that. search for used. Yeah. I had to disable the search for 2920s after the um, 12 core Ryzen part came out because it's dropping like a tank every day. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you could do 800, but that's uh, 700 for just the CPU. So, mm -hmm. if you if you have <laughs> 800 bucks to build a PC, you can build a monster nowadays. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, Steve has been the the name of that. The plugin is called Camel Camel Camel, <laughs> but there's also Honeybee, which I use as well. Okay, let's do a show. We're going to have to stop pretending yeah. a 40 year old dude doesn't know how to build a computer. Sorry, Lex Nero. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. It was a good thought exercise. Yeah. Hi, Jelly He was living in Africa for a bunch of years. <laughs> yeah, with internet access, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First class Africa. Uh, Except yeah, for the fiber karma, baboons. Karma, <laughs> karma chameleon. <laughs> Everybody's locked and looted. All right. Yeah. One, two, three. Okay. Here we go. Wait. Yep. <clears throat> Fizzy drinks. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> To challenge myself, I was like, try not to. This is what we have buttons. <laughs> hey everyone, and welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday, where we sit back, relax, talk about the fun things that we found going on in the world of Linux. I am Vin, that is Jill, and that is one Pedro Mateus. And with you joining Hello. us live, we're going to try to have a good time and see what is up. Speaking mm -hmm. of what's up, What's going on, everyone? Pedro, have you got those boots yet? I've been dying, dying to know. <laughs> no, uh, well, I've been dying to get myself a pair, but no, not yet, because uh, Solivar is like, uh, we have the 10.5s in stock now. Yeah, nine, <laughs> please. Just UK size nine, please. Please. No. <laughs> I'm Solivar. You can have my boots. They're too special. <laughs> Yay. I hope you get them, man. Uh, well, you'll eventually yeah. get them. Patience. Patience. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. My favorite thing, which is going to be horrible, is you're going to be in agony the first week and a half to two weeks. Oh, breaking those that, boots in. That's acceptable. <laughs> I got blisters all under my feet when I first moved here because I was walking all over the place. It's going to be brilliant. So. I've been saving up to hire people to chase you to work. <laughs> Because I'm a monster. Okay. Jill, what's, up, what's new with you? Oh, um, uh, had a great time on Linux Gamecast Weekly Saturday filling in for what's Jordan. That? Never heard of it. <laughs> That's our, our big uh, Saturday show with the Linux news reviews and whatever the hell else you come up with. Language. <laughs> I, I, I said elks. <laughs> Yeah, it was the hell before that, Joe. Oh, oh, okay. I'm womp, womp. Sorry. <laughs> you corrupted me. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Blame it on us now. <laughs> <laughs> so, over here, man, uh, I've basically come to the conclusion I've been looking around for. Um, kind of like a. It's, a, it's more of a challenge at this point. I want to know. Because with DaVinci Resolve, the software we use for editing, they have a light version. It works perfectly well. I want to get the pro version, kind of speed things up. And on eBay, they have dongles. They don't do the dong. I get to say dongles legitimately, too. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know, right? <laughs> Rare occasion. I do that at work a lot, <laughs> specifically for that reason. <laughs> But they made dongles, giggity, uh, right up to version 15. And they're future compatible, too. But... Piracy is rampant with hardware dongles for DaVinci. Okay, pro tip to no. everyone, if you see 150 bucks, that's the going price for ones that are not legitimate, which will not work with the DaVinci Resolve 16. 
Uh, I was even down to the point last night. I thought I found one to put up for $179. I'm trying to save a little bit of money. Like the mm -hmm. actual keys is going to be like 300 bucks. Not a bad price whatsoever. I'm going to save money where we can. And he's like, I got a copy of 15. It says copy of, and it was in the box. And he's like, with a dongle. And I message him. I was like, yo, man, I'll give you that. Uh, but. Is that legitimate? He's like, I'm pretty sure it's legitimate. I mean, I know it works with 15. I was like, well, could you try it with 16? Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, I don't have access to a computer. Uh-huh. Right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and what killed me is this was like a long-term eBay seller with great feedback, too. So buyer beware. I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah, don't get stuck with something. But, you know, such as eBay. Hey! Let's get right into it. A uh, couple of things. Hey, another thing we get to say non-ironically, 69 and the terms of yeah. Firefox. Yeah. So Firefox 69 has been released with several major new security and privacy features, including enhanced tracking protection will be turned on by default. And this default standard setting for and the default standard setting for enhanced Tracking protection now blocks third-party tracking cookies and crypto miners. Awesome. Also, there is a new support for receiving multiple video codecs, which makes it a lot easier for web RTC conferencing services to mix video from different clients. And I'm hoping that this will go a long way to improving web RTC performance in Firefox. We definitely need that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. <laughs> what we need. Um, this might be very like <laughs> podcasting narrow laser beam, I think, is the option to get rid of that stupid little thing in the middle when you go full screen. Yeah, oh, see, that would yeah. be very helpful because there used to be a flag you disabled and it would go away. But mm -hmm. Firefox said no. That that's mm -hmm. going on <laughs> and it's staying on. <laughs> we don't want you to use our product for podcasting. <laughs> Clearly. <No. laughs> And that's very unfortunate. I intellectually understand. I can roll back and be like, I get it, because then you could disable it. It, Man, all right. Mozilla, if somebody's going to get that trouble, they're just going to use Chrome. Because Chromium. Right. right. Um, yeah. <laughs> give me nuclear launch codes, man. Let me jump through six hoops, and I will use Firefox, because I can build Firefox with Jack support. Uh, what I'm really happy to see with this is blocking all the autoplay videos. I'm looking at you, ZDNet. Took them long mm. enough. <laughs> yeah. Dude, um, it's not the autoplay. But again, looking at you, ZDNet, it's the autoplay videos that have nothing to do with what you're trying to read. They're like, hey, there's a couple of gaming sites that do the same thing too. Man, I will <laughs> no script that site so quick. And this, and you might be thinking, hey, didn't they have something like that in one of the Chrome betas way back when? Not really way back when, maybe earlier this year. They mm -hmm. did, but they decided against rolling it out because, hey, man, we can, those are ads and we're grown. Yeah, ads auto play. So if all of a sudden you're auto playing media, those ads aren't going to roll. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little unfortunate. Um, looking forward to trying it out on possibly, I don't know, man. I'm running Firefox ESR right now because mm, Debian did. Yeah, Debian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hopefully in the next decade, I'll take a crack at it. And... <laughs> you can enable PPAs in Debian, just saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just download the Targot okay. GZ okay. Firefox, then. <laughs> that works. You don't have to. I'm just saying that you can. It's a possibility. It's there. <laughs> this is what I work with. <laughs> All right. Up next, Thunder Chicken. Mm -hmm. We get a little bit of this. Uh, not 69, but 68.0. A couple of new things. The ones I'm interested in. It's got a better dark theme. That's very mm -hmm. much welcome. Thank you for that. I'm quite excited. And you now have a color will. That's right. You can go full metal rainbows in your correspondence with other people. You know, if you think like the GIMP, that little circle thing you can drag around. And one thing mm -hmm. I didn't see in here, a couple of things, preferences with tabs, new menus. Here's the full color support will. That's kind of brilliant. And there's that beautiful dark theme. Because if you tried to use dark themes with Thunderbirds, man, it's a carp shoot. 100%, because yeah. there's a lot of times <laughs> yeah. like, well, that just became completely unusable and unreadable. And attachment yes. management, which <laughs> you should, don't send attachments to people. But mm -hmm. I didn't see anything for performance. Maybe, uh, I'll ask you, Pedro. Like the, the, there's two apps, and 
in all fairness, this is like I have a 12 core CPU and an NVMe drive and fast one at that. <laughs> Two applications under Linux that don't open first world problems incoming, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Don't open by the time I've released the micro switch on my mouse and that's Steam and that's Thunderbird. Uh, yes. <laughs> <And> Gimp. <laughs> yeah. Gimp's Gimp gotten does better, a bit though. of the load. <laughs> <laughs> Well, of course, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it still does. It shows that little pop up with the loading bar. It's usually yes. just it shows, it, it fills, and it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the, those are very much like uh, Thunderbird and um, Steam, especially if you have like six different email inboxes set up in Thunderbird. It's mm -hmm. slow. It is it's a bit slow. slow. <laughs> but what actually surprised me with this release is that it came from Mozilla. And I remember Mozilla not too long ago saying, yeah, the Thunder Chicken is new home. <laughs> so we um, were kind of, you know, willing to surrender the code and let someone take care of it. And I'm guessing the Document Foundation and everyone else that may have been interested looked at it and said, nope. Well, <laughs> to their credit. But... <laughs> Good point, Pedro. <laughs> Somebody's still got to work on it. It's an important piece. Um... I feel like if you're actually having to deal with email, webmail doesn't cut it. Just doesn't. No, 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 no. You need yeah. a dedicated client, especially if you have six Multiple, different right. uh, boxes uh, from different yeah. providers. It's you got to have that centralized client. Exactly. It's one of the first yeah. things to get installed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I absolutely love the new app menu. Um, what's really nice about it is all the functions are contained in one panel now, and it's so much cleaner and neater than having multiple sub menus to scroll through. That was always a bit annoying. And so it's, it's, but it's nice to have having a refreshed Thunderbird user, user interface because the interface was looking a bit stale and dated. So it was about well, time it, it needed it, but it, it you know, it was always really theme. functional. But yeah, it is better. <laughs> the default theme is still the same, but yeah, now you have the option of making it dark. Yeah. Which is yeah, much better. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it. It's a mail client. Let's not yeah. gnome it up and turn it into a button. Like a Aww. one click button. Oh, but, <laughs> but it's still nice to have the app menu, all the functions contained in one menu instead of yeah. going to, you know, I, I just, I preferred that. <laughs> so. Okay. Options. Hey, man, Dell's got a new piece of kit. The XPS 13 Developer Edition. What's that, man? Does that like unlock any uh, special Linux powers? Yeah. So this month you can get your hands on a do new Dell XPS 13 Developer Edition ninth generation laptop starting at eight hundred and ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. And what's cool is the Dell XPS 13 seven thirty nine seven three ninety will include um, Intel Core i five processor or an i seven a six core processor, a 13 inch infinity edge display with HD and ultra HD resolutions, up to 16 gigs of RAM, killer two by two Wi-Fi, And this updated model will also include two Thunderbolt three ports. And that is really, really cool. That's awesome. Uh, you have in the show notes there, it's the LPDDR3. Is it oh, DDR4? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that well, that was what they said in the article, and I realized it was wrong. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. Omg Ubuntu, check your stuff. Uh, the yeah. The thing that I honestly really don't care about mm -hmm. as someone who used uh, an XPS thirteen, the ninety three sixty, for couple, good couple of months, uh, the touch screen doesn't really do anything for me. Honestly, I. I just got mm. really annoyed whenever someone started using the touchscreen screen slide. Uh, now I'm going they... to have to wipe that. <laughs> Everyone thinks they want a touch screen laptop until you use it and you're like, ow, no, <laughs> nope, nope. But yeah, I'd be really happy. Uh, also, this is the, uh, the 7390 is the two in one model, uh, which means it does the whole flip around, become a tablet type of thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm really not down with the whole touchscreen thing but i totally wouldn't mind one without the uh touch screen and the uh 1080p matte display because i had a look at the pictures and the black model it looks 
Amazing. Mm -hmm. I'd be very happy with Beautiful. that. Heck, I'd be happy with the uh, 9380 <laughs> in black as well. It's just, give me. <laughs> <laughs> That's neat. Dell makes some solid yeah. kit. Uh, it's a laptop, so my professional opinion, don't care. Um, <laughs> <laughs> up next hyperfine up next, double fine we can uh well, yeah. well we can take all the guesswork uh and knowing uh in knowing exactly how long a command took to run by using hyperfine and it is basically you just feed it a command and you can tell it to warm up to pre-run the command a couple of times to like cache everything you can set it to completely ignore the cache and just do a cold run you can um feed it a bunch of parameters for it to run specific runs at specific times and it gives you the time uh that a command took to run it gives you an estimate uh eta uh and it gives you well yeah it gives you a progress bar which i was looking at it's like oh this would be really handy for those distros out there that when you run dd uh, the dash dash show progress bar is not an option Solus. Uh it's um <laughs> so yeah it's, you just feed it literally any command that usually doesn't have a progress bar like a copy a cp or a, an mv literally anything and it will give you that progress bar and will give you the time to like the 0.1 of a millise uh, millisecond of how long it took to run so that's pretty good <laughs> Yeah, it, it worked uh, beautifully, and it was very, very accurate. I first ran the, the cat command, and of course it was under five milliseconds, and then htop, um, which was pr still pretty fast, but inksy, if, if anyone out there uses inksy, um, like uh, launching a Thunderbird or Steam, sometimes it can take a second, but after it gets going, after like 10 cycles, then it's much faster. But Inksy takes yeah. a while, too. <laughs> Interesting way to kind of automate a little bit, too, because it'll give you your yeah. performance yeah. results. <laughs> On, I, can, is there anything you can feed it? I mean, you can feed it fine, grep, or anything like that. And yeah. You can feed it literally anything. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. Oh, oh, I used it. I also used it to launch Steam <laughs> to see how long that took. <laughs> yes, you can see exactly how long it takes Steam to start up. Although you yeah. might want to uh, like put some uh, quotes around it and feed the Steam output into Dev Null so you don't get like the jumble uh, of messages. Yes. Or, yeah. Yeah. Hey man, let, we could do the RM command, but we only get one shot. Oh yeah. <laughs> and you yes. a progress bar and then you see what happens. <laughs> You, know, you can get away with a lot, man, because I've straight up swapped out kernels, like, then did a reboot that I was running that kernel. And it's like, don't do that. And it's like, trust me on this one. I've done it a million. <laughs> Never getting bit yet. It'll happen next time. Hey, we're talking about the command line, so let's kind of bring up a solution to mm. a problem that's already been fixed. <laughs> but last week, uh, NPM, man, some ads showed up. People rightfully lost their minds man so now we have no cli ads it's like extra protection for npm so you don't get spam advertisements when you're installing a tiny little package that needs four gigs of dependencies so there it is it's open source hopefully we'll never have to use it because um <laughs> NPM yeah. has banned <laughs> terminal ads javascript community's <laughs> negative reaction <laughs> rightfully so recent Experiment kills potential avenue for funding open source projects. Yay. Action, reaction. 100% mm -hmm. adds at runtime or installation. Big honking no no now. Don't even think about it. Don't do it. You'll get nuked from orbit. However, <laughs> you can still have packages that can be used to display ads for a program or something like that. That's completely within the scope of possibility. And I'm glad they nuked this from Orbit, like immediately and with a quickness before things went to complete nope. And that would have happened. We know that would have happened. Oh, and yeah, yeah like we were using people mentioned like, whoa, what's this? And like, oh, this is not good. <laughs> no. And yeah. it's like, uh, I saw the uh, thing about no CLI ads in the show. It's like, what's this about? Oh, NPM. Oh, of course they have uh, ads when you yes. install something now. Uh, and then I, I was looking on my phone and I saw like one of the Google notifications about the news. It's like NPM developers ban um, terminal ads. It's like, huh? 
<laughs> the plot thickens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was, you know, I was happy that um, Ubu Kadaje, the main developer, listened to the community. Uh, that was really, really good on his part. And um, also that Linode and LogRocket bowed out as well because they wanted to use it as a form of, of uh, advertising as well. <laughs> well, it does boil back to, you know, a conversation that we don't really have time to cover, but it's trying to find a way to monetize free yeah. software. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a yes. difficult task. So, yeah. And that's not really... It's, it's not not a good way to do it. No, <laughs> no. If you're if you're targeting people who are installing, who are using your tool for the the purpose that you designed it for, and you're actively targeting them to monetize yourself, it's a bit scummy. Well, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Could have like a big pop up screen, man. Come on, increase this. We could. <laughs> Hi, Microsoft. How you doing? <laughs> Don't give them ideas, you monster. Let's talk about some geeky stuff, man. Yes, yeah, specifically the no maps. So you probably have seen the news that uh, next week or close to uh, GNOME 334 will be coming out. And so there's a bunch of news surrounding everything that constitutes like a no map. Uh, everything, every single one of them is getting a bit of an update, be it just a GTK integration or in the case of no maps, basically getting it up and running to a point where I would say it's like, yes, if I had to use no maps, that is pretty much use it. It's useful. So yeah, yeah it is currently it's um, it's using the Mapbox API uh, with the open street maps. Uh, so you may remember a while back, uh, I think Strider was still on the show when we talked about it because they ran into a bit of an issue with the previous map provider so they shifted to using um open street maps and it's awesome to see that it works as well as it does and yeah next week we'll have the full gnome 334 so i very much look forward to that how about you jill yeah oh definitely <laughs> and though although i haven't used no maps all that much it is nice to have a local map viewer as part of gnome that is a launchable app uh with within yeah. the uh, distro and one that points to open street map when needed that's awesome i i actually use open street map a lot as an alternative to Google Maps. And I definitely will now pay more attention to no maps, which is implementing lots of Google Map functions now, which is really awesome. Because I, I remember yeah. when I looked at it, when it was first starting, there was there, it didn't do a lot. <laughs> so. Well, they threw in you know, a couple of features with this. Uh, one, which is like, oh, well then, that makes things useful, is mm -hmm. it comes back. I mean, it will open the last location that you were at. Which, yeah. Hey, I'm glad that's the thing. Uh, they implemented support for opening URLs, pointing to objects, and open street map directly. So if you like wooden chats or anything like that, that will help out. Huge fan of this. I always think about when I read this is I use a gang of GNOME software, even though I have nothing but seething mm -hmm. rage. And I don't. I pretend, you know, because it's <laughs> funny to pick yeah. on it. I, if you get upset over desktop managers, Gail, um, mm -hmm. I don't use the desktop manager, but you know, tons of GNOME software like GNOME Disk. Is that daily? Not hopefully mm -hmm. not daily. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> GNOME System Monitor. Big fan of that. GNOME Calculator. Mm -hmm. Don't know why. There's a billion calculators, but I always install my GNOME Calculator. Calculator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, calculator. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, that's definitely a thing. Good on that, Pedro. You made something happen that I couldn't get to work. Uh, mm. Did I? Yeah, you did. <laughs> because it was just, uh, yeah, no, I saw the uh, the Geek Bench uh, link Geek, in the show notes. Geek Bench. Geek, 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 Geek Bench. Geek We're going to get this a quick mention because it's up to version 5. It's out. It's available on Linux. And Pedro, it includes GPU compute benchmarks. It do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you're mm -hmm. running on Mac OS, you also get dark mode, but we don't get a, a GUI because we're Linux nerds. We're Linux, uh, man. We don't deserve <laughs> yeah. that. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, it gives you the option to uh, run a, it's like seven or eight different tests on your GPU, and you have three different uh, compute 
platforms that you can use. You can use Vulkan, OpenCL, and CUDA. So basically, if you're going to try CUDA, I guess you'll need the uh, NVIDIA GPUs. But do let us know if you can run uh, the CUDAs on uh, an AMD card or even an Intel processor. That'd be funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did run the. Uh, I ran it with uh, Vulcan, and I got yeah, I got. Uh, that's your five, open five, CL five, score, and that's with your 1080, mm. right? Yeah, that's with my 1080 uh, with oh. the 20 compute units. Here's the 2060. And of course, <laughs> yeah, with 30 compute units and those dedicated tensor cores, which they are very much just compute cores. It makes sense that it would uh, have about twenty thousand higher. <laughs> Oh man, that's a lot of extra <laughs> steps to just say wrecked. <laughs> no, no, that's uh, that's legitimate. That's the 2060 outperforming a 1080. It is a very uh, artificial workload, but it it does. It's a very mm -hmm. artificial workload that I use um, every Wednesday and every Sunday to render the video. <laughs> <laughs> In my I'm talking artificial about the ones. Land. I'm talking about the ones that they run. Yes, if you're doing Da Vinci. That will very much use OpenCL. <laughs> Actually, it uses CUDA, but close enough. Yeah, ish. <laughs> it is a compute layer, technically. Well, I yeah. can. I, I have the options for OpenCL or CUDA. Just say. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, so, I have the ahead. option for yeah. Vulkan. Apparently, you don't. <laughs> no, I don't, because I'm too cool, man. I don't. I run Debian ten. I don't need your hipster Vulkan technology unless I'm playing Vulkan video games in Steam, which I do every day, man. Jill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, well, see, this is what was cool is a single user license for Linux, Windows and Mac OS is only um, four dollars and ninety nine cents. But you can actually get all three for seven dollars and forty nine cents, which is really great when you you have if you run all platforms. And um, what's really actually really good is the Geekbench 5 Pro version license for commercial use includes command line tools, standalone mode, benchmark configuration and automation and support. And is actually on sale now for forty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. And actually, for those of you out there who don't know, this so this software can be very very expensive. Like the the local retailers, like um, Office Max and and Staples, they spend thousands on Geekbench and, uh, and not Geekbench, but on other uh, benchmarking utilities. So this mm -hmm. is actually a really good price. I was I was happy with it. <laughs> If you're buying software at a brick and mortar store, you deserve to pay any price they put on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you are, uh, unless you can haggle real good. Uh, right. The... <laughs> you know, that business strategy is like, we only got to get one or two a month. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, one of the things I noticed uh, that changed from Geekbench 4, which was the one that, well, it was the one that I used a lot to basically run all of the, des uh, the laptops and this desktop to like mm. see what kind of overclock or what kind of memory speed makes it the most difference. Uh, basically, all of the CPU scores were divided by four, because I used to get like um, eight, uh, 6 thousand something uh, in a single thread with this 3700X, and about 38 thousand and something on multi-thread, and I read it again, and it's like hmm. 1100 single thread, and 8600 for multi-thread so it's like where did the rest of the score go huh. <laughs> well this is one of those things i think we were talking about on saturday where i had a higher performance running in on-demand mode mm -hmm. than i did with performance yeah and it's like oh this mm -hmm. is one of those deals okay but fine. yeah this, this is almost exactly uh if you divide the old scores, at least in my case, if you divide the scores I by four. everyone at home there would be no maths. All right? <laughs> yeah. Aww. I did maths before the show. I need to talk about it, okay? Yeah. <laughs> that explains the drool. Okay. Um, I don't know where I'm going to go with that. How do you segue in from drool? Hey, well, if you'd, if you'd like, like to, to drool uh, all over our fresh, hot new T-shirts, uh, <laughs> we have those. If you want to kick a few cycles like that, we got Hell Elks, we got uh, this show, LWDW, the classic, we hey. got mugs and all that. This helps us pay for bandwidth and all the cool stuff that we bring to you each and every week. And that's um, speaking directly to 111 people who make this show possible. Our bosses Yay. Oh, yeah. taking advantage of... <laughs> 
We have a couple of levels with Death Notes. If you want to help us with the shows, you can straight up creep on us, see monsters. They get early access. Well, they get access to the pre-pre super shows and they can hop in and do all that. Chicago kicks ass. That's just there because Empty wanted it. That's kind of brilliant. <laughs> and we also have executive <laughs> producers, which if you're Yay. like, hey man, I'd like to be on the show. Hop in an hour before we Pretty go live much, on Saturdays yeah. and you can be on the show, man. That's uh, <laughs> something that we have. Thanks, everybody. Make Mm-hmm. this possible we have a new patreon that we get to think yeah yes, yes. adrian adrian Adrian-an. thank you two ways adrian, adrian- that's An. right it has the two An. ways <laughs> <laughs> yes. if you want to learn two facts about adrian good morning on your saturday <laughs> show pedro um yes yes i mean detective <laughs> pedro Chu, or i don't know or... <laughs> <laughs> That was funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, we have Libra Pay and all that other fun stuff. Everybody keep being awesome. Gang of affiliate links. Uh, what else? Oh, we got Wish Zones because we're like, hey, Jill, uh, you can add stuff to your Wish Zone that'll Give help you wish zone. <laughs> with your broadcasting and everything else, uh, you know, to help upgrade your studio set. And Aww. Jill put a bunch of plushies. So. <laughs> Oh, I see a 3600 X and a couple of video cards <laughs> and the pink mouse. And a backpack. <laughs> see, look, look at my boring ass right here. This is, this is <laughs> my browsing is keyboards and stuff. Pedro, 3D mice. Well, uh, you can see there's a gaming chair if you'd like me re- yeah. uh, to help me replace this one. <laughs> nope, nope. Nice. <laughs> Nicholas Cage poster. That's kind of brilliant. We got there's fans, of those. keyboards. <laughs> And something that looks like it squeezes juice down there at the bottom. <laughs> I have a fan. All right, fair enough. I got a fan on mine. Uh, routers, uh, more fans. I like fans. Hey, man, everybody's fan. And as always, we do have the 100% Linux compatible, me tested, flying spaghetti monster approved section. That's on our web zone, linuxemcast.com. Anything in the studio that we're currently using that I know for a fact works with Linux. Yes. Is on there. And as we always say, go bite on Newegg if you want. That's I think we get a cut from that, but that's not important. <laughs> we do have thing. that one. <laughs> what? We do have that uh, link. If you hover over the relevant section on uh, LinuxGameCast.com, there's, it, it's in there somewhere. <laughs> it's kind of brilliant. It's under the About section. It's kind of hot. Yes. <laughs> hey, kids. Let's have a slice of diabetes. I mean, pie. A slice of pie. cartoon pie. Mm. <laughs> Peg leg, which is what you're going to end up with if you try this the home version. Um, it's a distro, the Pirate Box oh. platform, designed to be measurable and run on hardware small enough to, wait for it, you guessed it, implant in the human body. Inspired by pirate radio and amput. No, I don't know, man. Self contained mobile collaboration file sharing device. Pirate Box utilizes free Libre open source flaws. For images. No, this is a Raspberry <laughs> Pi W. And they walk through putting this in. And I'm not, I'm uh. not, you can go in the show notes and <laughs> clicky poo all over that because there's yeah. images of. Homeboy getting it inserted in his, into his thigh meats. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that, man, because no. my first thought, and, and if we're looking at it, like, okay, th- this is clearly a W that has what appears to be some inert goo over it, and it's got wireless charging on it, so it's got a big inductor <laughs> coil on the mm-hmm. other side that you can't see. <laughs> and you're going to put that and you like meats. And my first thought mm-hmm. was, what happens when somebody kicks you there and that thing snaps and mm-hmm. starts leaching <laughs> all that lovely, happy fun juice? No, well, not necessarily. Well, still, it's going to mix silicon and nope. Uh, not to mention that you're going to have to carry one of those uh, wireless power uh, feeders in your pocket all the time yeah. pointed directly uh-uh. at your muscle i'm just going to put a cheem out on the floor and rub <laughs> on it. And it. it's like do you want cancer because yes. that's how you get cancer <laughs> as someone who just ordered a wi-fi keyboard man the hand cancers i look forward to Dude. but that's power oh, it's, it's man. power wireless power i i, I get it the need is I, I can't really okay do um you just think about this. I get a little edgy, but I, 
I got a lot of implants in my body and they're not like Deus Ex stuff. It's like holding me together. It's like, it's even mis mismatched, man. They didn't put this arm back together properly. Um, most of mine are made out of titanium and I worry about stuff like this. I have yeah. an artificial knee. I worry about hitting that thing because usually people are old when they get one. So they're like, mm -hmm. yeah, it'll outlive you. Not in my case. <laughs> this thing's going to have to be replaced if I stick around too much longer. So, yeah, mm -hmm. having something like that floating around, uh-uh, nope. Maybe, all right, yeah. maybe inside my <laughs> rib cage. Maybe. Yeah. Well, that thing's uh, bigger than a pacemaker. No. <laughs> I, dude, I lovingly punch people in their sternum. <laughs> because I know that's like a reasonably safe place not to kill them. <laughs> Unless it's already fractured. <laughs> Then you apologize a little bit. <laughs> like, buy him an ice sorry. cream. Yeah. <laughs> or you're taking him to the ER. But anyway, so what were we said? Yeah. That, that, that's okay. That was, it's actually bigger than a pacemaker. I, I, I'm going to have to have one of those installed at some point. And that's bigger than the pacemaker. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, that just kind of a, freaks me out. <laughs> the idea of sending wireless power is the thing that's actually hitting the note button for me. It's like, no. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like, I run know. a teeny tiny little USB cable out of your skin <laughs> if you have to. Not wireless. <laughs> yeah, because you yeah. need something that's going to be a constant source of irritation and infection for your terminal <laughs> ear. Yeah, brilliant. But it's somewhere that it doesn't... <laughs> You know. you, you, you've watched too much Star Trek, son. It don't worry Aww. about that. It's coming up next. <laughs> yeah, so this is Keyboard Pi. Uh, because it is quite hard to get a mobile Linux handheld device in 2019, you either have to build one to get your hands on a discontinued... Uh, you either have to build one or get your hands on a discontinued obscure one, such as the Pocket Chip, which I have right here. <laughs> Yay! And um, so... This DIY Linux handheld build is based on Anthony D. Garalamo's design and keyboard and a hyperpixel handheld and teensy thumb board. Yep, that's and a teensy the, thumb. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. and the following mm -hmm. parts. So obviously it's got the, the hyperpixel screen, which is a four inch touch screen. It's got a Raspberry Pi Model 3B plus and a really cool 3D printed retro looking case and frame and full 60 keys QWERTY keyboard controlled by a teensy 3.2 perfect for programming and using the command line and mm -hmm. a 5,000 milliamp battery regulated by Adafruit power boost and three usable USB and ethernet ports. Pedro, so it looks to be a good me, one. <laughs> how, how many blocks of 30 minutes would, would you play with this? Go, oh, that's neat. And never touch it again. <laughs> See, I would very much like to build it, but after it was built, it's like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. The, 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 where's my tablet? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> but uh, one of the things that they mentioned is like, okay, these are the things that um, the... Um, a keyboard pie can do that a regular phone can also do and you got the usuals mm -hmm. but then they also get to the the bit where it's like okay things that the raspberry pi handheld cannot do yet but a smartphone can do and they have phone calls sms and data connectivity and it's like wait a second someone made a wan hat for the raspberry pi mm -hmm. and i went looking it's like yes it exists yeah. it has a, a little i think it's an lte uh, chip on it and it's got a slot for a sim so it would just me uh would just be a matter of uh finding the software to hook into the sim to get the sms and the calls going and the data connectivity well that's that's what the wan uh hat already does done <laughs> i am sure by the time you akira that together you would actually hit a negative tsa acceptance factor yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> Put it inside uh, one of those pie tops, like the laptop shell for the Raspberry Pi. <laughs> parts bulging out. Be awesome. <laughs> Put a squeaky toy mm -hmm. in it. All right. Hey. <laughs> maybe if you're working on something made of us, maybe we got something right, wrong, negative, up, down, left, right, you name it, thoughts, hints, allegations, anything you want to throw our way, we would love to hear from you. And there's an easy way to go about doing that. There mm -hmm. is. It's called a contact uh, form, I suppose. We can call it that. Wow, you can you're find new it. With this. 
Yes, <laughs> on linuxgamecast.com <laughs> uh, under the cleverly named contact button. And just make sure you pick LWDW for the uh, show that you're sending your feedback to. Otherwise, you might end up sending some hate mail to that Saturday show, What Jill Joined Us Last Week. So, yeah, <laughs> that is the way to do it. <laughs> and if uh, you do get a CapShot, take a screenshot. Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor yeah. cat. He looks a bit diseased. Yes. I think Aww. he has the hand hand cancers. Yeah. That's a cat. <laughs> you need a better prescription, sweetheart. Um, oh. Coming up first from Jason, a fragmentation from Jason. Um, what do we have on the topic of Linux fragmentation being a problem? When it comes to security, a good thing? Question mark. Everyone not shipping the same library versions, desktop managers and kernels would make it more difficult. In his humble opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Well, yes, but that's just the security through obscurity uh, type of mm -hmm. argument, because it's like, yeah, yeah. It, it's just you have uh, a bunch of different variations on the same package and yes the operating system usually makes use of the same tools but it's different versions depending on the kind of distro that you're running now like i i guess i could say we're, we're just talking about attack surface yes mm. that, that so makes it that, that much more the attack surface up a bit. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. So do you, you think there's advantages to... and disadvantages of having like a homogenous like you like window like Microsoft is hell bent on Windows 10 and it's like oh, if you get an update you get it but I don't want it Microsoft it won't install mm -hmm. on my system it's failed three <laughs> times don't care um, <laughs> trying to get everything leveled out that way like your attack surface is like nice and smooth as opposed yeah, to yeah it's it's yeah. always the same you're targeting the same software the exact same versions or close to uh, with Linux, yeah, especially when it comes to distros that use completely different libraries to do the same thing. Like, instead of glibc, you use the muzzle libc. Uh, instead of... Just just think about, like, the basic kernel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you compile yeah. a kernel, but instead of having everything like the most of the mainstream distro kernels that uh, have the hooks for all the possible uh, user-facing hardware, you compile your own kernel and all of a sudden those hooks aren't there so that's even less surface so yeah <laughs> jill yeah the the fact that we're you know linux is diversified you know it's exactly to the point of ven and pedro is it makes it harder <laughs> to yep. attack certain areas because we have so many uh there's so many um security fallbacks to those mm -hmm. attack areas that that are developed by you know thousands of different developers that it actually makes the platform more secure so that's yep. why it, linux is considered the most secure operating system in the world because we have that diversity you know we have, have bsd would like and, a word with yeah, you but BSD okay would tell you to, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just, well BSD i guess that's enjoys a thing. your fantasy world um yeah but for linux specifically yes linux yeah. for linux <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Circular reasoning there. Um, it, moral of the story: Run haiku. Um, uh, uh, don't, run don't, haiku. don't, 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 don't. As far as security goes, that's a wide open door. No. Okay. Yeah. How about this? I think SkyOS because I don't think the guy ever finished the network stack. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> because I remember slash dot lost its mind as he was developing it, and I'm like, do not name it Skynet. He's like, what should I do in the networks? <laughs> it was like, no, no, bad dub. <laughs> Pedro. Well, uh, I guess the last one comes from Laurent, uh, and they ask, the HDMI audio is almost two seconds out of sync on my Linux PC when plugged into the TV. Rebooting or power cycling the TV fixes it, but it's getting annoying. Ideas? Um... Disable any kind of image processing that your TV may be doing, like... If you have like uh, motion smoothing or anything that does any kind of uh, signal processing on the TV, turn it off. If that helps, cool. That's what you need to do. Mm -hmm. um, if it doesn't help, try a different HDMI. I don't know. <laughs> Jill, solve the problem. Yeah. I, well, actually, um, I know this is an issue with Samsung TVs in particular because they have some overhead 
for their embedded OS, and um, this becomes a, a, a problem. Um, I, I another alternative might be to get an HDMI converter and bring in the audio uh, via, via um, the coax. Three and a half mil. If, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's yeah. Instead of using the HDMI output, use use a mm -hmm. different output on the audio. Then there's the old man <laughs> then <way. laughs> Son or daughter. Open up Pavu control, set the delay for 200 milliseconds. Done. Ah, there you go. <laughs> or if you're bored. 2000? You... Keep ranking it up, maybe. Because it's two <laughs> seconds. <laughs> the 200, is it seconds or milliseconds? Uh, 200 in milliseconds is not 0.2 seconds. So we can argue the little details, but you know what I mean. <laughs> 2000, <then>. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would... No, it should be like 200 milliseconds. Oh, well, two full seconds. Uh, let me... I would have to math that back out, because I don't know what Pavu control measures. Does it... Anyway. It's usually pretty good on the uh, like milliseconds being milliseconds yeah, as far as it, the delay translation goes. Anyway, do what I told you <laughs> instead of messing around with converting it out or whatever Pedro oh. said. Uh, All I said was <laughs> disable any kind of image processing that your TV may be doing yeah. because I've seen Convert this happen on this TV. <laughs> Converters are only five bucks. Amazon basics. <laughs> Open Pavu control and tap a button a few times and it'll be fixed. How about that? Uh, Pick up your remote that, that and set help. the yeah. uh, settings to default there. <laughs> See, there you go. Do you have three different solutions for yeah. one little problem? Yeah. Well, what you need to do is buy a tube TV with coaxial and mix. Nah, man, hey, beautiful yeah. people, we gotta get out of here. Thanks for showing up. We're gonna roll some credits. How about that? Yeah, sounds good. <laughs>10 years old ish <laughs> well they don't make plasma no. tvs anymore so mine's vintage yeah yeah no this this is not plasma this is um tn it's a tn panel that, they still make tn panels yeah <laughs> yeah not that bad though <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> bye, bye everyone see you next week <laughs>
No, um, but there, and if you if you're going to be buying a new TV, it's going to have something built into it. Those don't generally yeah. don't exist unless you buy a monitor. I can tell you, I, I can recommend a 43 inch PC monitor that doesn't have anything built into it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the one we have is awesome. I love it. It's got severe issues, but for the price, you mm -hmm. can't beat it. Yeah. It is 43 inches. That, that, that That's the size of that. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's IPS. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's bigger than my TV. Yeah. Mm. That TV I had in Portugal was 42 inches. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, you can make a good TN panel. The problem is a good TN yeah. panel doesn't cost much less than IPS. No, it does mm. not. <laughs> so what you typically see, like in that price range, you're like, why is this so cheap? Because it's not a very good Dan Brown. No. <laughs> but what is, is it TA the or TR, the other alternate? I, it, you know the one I'm considering, talking about. Yeah, yeah considering that, how old it is and it's a Samsung TV, it's probably TA. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> TFT. No, mm -hmm. no. This there was a one that came a little bit after than T and um Yeah. You'll see monitors using that. Was that in between? Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's only a magical internet connection device program that you could type that into. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. And I said that word that Arthur and said. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, right at the beginning of the show. Mm. You joined us from some hell, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was entertaining. It was like, well, language. Oh, Elks? <laughs> well, hell when in, in radio, we could say that. <laughs> but I... I wasn't thinking. I shouldn't have said anything. Depending on what time at night <laughs> and in which states. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, hell was one of the words that we could say um, on radio. At... Oh, glitch, glitching. <laughs> yeah, I saw that a couple of times during the show. Yeah, it was at the, <laughs> actually, it was at the very beginning when we were doing our intros. There was one there. <laughs> And then it goes gray, and maybe it'll come back. <laughs> oh, okay. mine doesn't go gray. It just stops. The video stops, uh, return, and then it then it comes back real quick. Yeah, no, mine is just gray it's right now. Hello, Jitzer is having connectivity issues. Oh. Okay. Hmm. What kind of panel do you have? Yep, that's the one. Not on the sin. Specific players. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> jitsy being jitsy. It's not having any of it tonight. Yeah. What is? <laughs> Jitsi. Jitsi. <laughs> All right, beautiful people. Do we get anything else going on before we get out of here? <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh. No, I not that I can think of right now. It's like, yeah, I, I'm since I'm going to buy a very expensive pair of boots, I'm not buying any random eBay stuff. Mm. <laughs> All right, sounds like a plan. We will yep. see you next week. Okay, everyone, we love you. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. <laughs>